<laughs> Hello. Hey, Hodies. First and foremost, uh, Kelly, thank you so much for reminding me. Happy, happy birthday, Kelly. I haven't even started the live. I, I came in hot. Let's everyone wish happy birthday to Kelly. If you're in the chat, you do it in the chat. If you're going to be in the comments later, I want to see them in the comments later. Welcome to what is going to be the last Critical Sass Live of the year. Woo! We did it. If you are new to my channel and you have somehow stumbled across like the replay of this video, Critical Sass is where we look at new makeup releases and we dissect the marketing and we try to just like really suss out whether or not these makeup items are like quality, worth our time, uh, should we skip them? And we just could discuss it as a unit. So that's what we're going to be doing. And what's great when we're on the live is that everyone can chime in. So since it is the last Critical Sass Live of the year, I want to thank anyone who has been in a Critical Sass, anyone who's going to be in this Critical Sass Live tonight. The chats are so incredibly fun every time we do this. And I'm like, you're all so smart. And I just, I really appreciate that. It makes my day. We love to see it. I thought I had something else to say before we like really jumped into the taste test. <laughs> the taste test of it all. Um, but I don't think I do. Oh, yes. We have a hollow shirt on. Uh, everything that's, if you, someone asks what I'm wearing on my face, it's all, it should be all in the description box already. Because I try to do that before I go live, just in case anyone is curious. Uh Good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Okay. Now, you had a homework assignment. You don't need to do this with me right now, but we're gonna. So last, last time we talked, we had a great discussion about Biscoff spread, speculo spread, cookie butter. I know that in other countries, you call it other things. But we, I think we figured it out. Like the people in Australia figured it out. So I have Biscoff spread. Um, Tiffany is in the chat. We went to Target to buy this. I mean, we were doing other things, but this was necessary. <laughs> Embarrassingly, bought other things at Target. So I bought this on Saturday. This is how much damage I've done. Just with a spoon. Okay. Smell it. How's everyone... What's the aroma to you? Anyone who has it, what's it smell like? Just deliciousness? Butter? Gooey? Mmm? Deliciousness? I don't know. I have a Chipotle bowl. Not speculos, but I'm jealous. Okay, Kelsey, Kelsey D asks an important question. Smooth or crunchy? Now, this is not my favorite brand of cream butter. I do prefer the Trader Joe's explicitly because Trader Joe's has a crunchy version. And it is better because it's like bits of wonderful crunchy speculos inside of it's good but if we're talking if we're talking peanut butter it's got to be creamy and that's like where i stand because i don't think peanut butter should taste like peanuts and that's controversial and bold and brave okay i recommend a spoon i it's supposed to be a spread i never once have spread cookie butter upon another thing mm. so I recommend a gob this big. I'll I'll mute my mic while I'm like gobbling on this, but I just we're all gonna do this together. I'm also hungry. Now realizing that I didn't eat dinner. It's 7 30 p.m. my time. Which I know it's dinner time for some people, but like I grew up in a family where we eat dinner at 6 p.m. So I'm like, we're an hour and a half late. Okay. Everyone, taste test. I love cookie butter. There was a lot of noises coming out of my body at that time. The crunch, the crunchy is good. I've never heard of the Lotus brand, but I'm a big fan of cookie butter. I'm such a big fan, but I can't keep it in the house because I will, you know, my body will just be blessed with it so often that will grow into a speculous cookie. It's okay. It's okay. There's still time. If you did not have your speculos today, 
report back later. Where team Trader Joe's, any speculos brand, if you catch this live, I will accept a sponsorship. And that's on period. <laughs> yes, Pia, go in for more. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to talk about some makeup? So it's been a month. It's been like a whole month. Like, I think the last time I did Critical Sass was Critical Sass Live. Last time. And then I got like lost in the sauce. I kept posting. And then all of a sudden it was like almost time for this one. So we're a little bit behind. So we're like kind of just catching up. But also, I will say this. When I was like looking for things to talk about, I was not really inspired to talk about much. So it might even be a shorter Critical Sass Live. And I don't, I really don't think we're going to see anything too exciting moving into the holiday season because it all has to happen before Black Friday. Like they have to get all the things out. So I just think we're going to, on crackers, spark, oh, sweet and salty. <gasps> Maybe on a pretzel, like Nutella and pretzels, pretzels and speculos. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's get this show on the road. All right, first up, Laura Lee Los Angeles, the whimsical nudes palette. Ten shades, $36. I think the concept of a whimsical nudes is nude. Whimsical nude is tough. I think the closest a brand has gotten to that concept would have been the Nearly Natural palette from Glaminatrix. And I will say I'm excited. It, there's some texture there. Is it enough texture? Is it enough things to be called whimsical? No. But I do, I do want to ask the question to all of us here. What is a whimsical nude? How does one make that palette? And Laura, she said, I'm a try. But she, <laughs> did she succeed? I'm not so sure. However, if we remove the title and the concept from it, I think it's pretty. <laughs> it's not something I would ever buy. However, I would also like to comment on the $36 price point. Now that everything is $60 to $70, like baseline, that's what palettes seem to cost now. And it's like now everything costs the same price as like a midi Natasha Denona, which is so weird because remember, I remember like four years ago when we were like, palettes will never be that much. And now every single palette is like in the 60, 50 to $70 range. And that's like a regular one. And not everyone, but like I'm talking like Sephora mid-range and up. It's like, that's the price point. It's scary. So I appreciate $36. I have not tried this brand and I likely won't, but I just wanted to like philosophize. Oh man, I cannot say that word. Philosophize. Okay, here's a fun thing. Me and my friend, Etta, we cannot say the word philosophize. So we call it falafel friesing. So I just want to falafel fries about what a whimsical nude may look like. All right, the chat is popping. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to try to find, I'm going to try to find what people are talking about. I'm going to get in there. I'm also going to end the pool because I learned how to do that today. All right, so boring. Yawn. All right. Mm. Amy is driving and watching. We love to we love to see it. <laughs> and you also got the cookie butter. We love to see it. I feel someone that said, "Does this look like Manny's Advent palette?" I I I still don't know. <laughs> I still don't know what that palette looks like, so I can't answer you. I never looked at it. I was like, "What if I want it?" And I don't. So I still don't know what it looks like. The packaging isn't whimsical. Why isn't the packaging whimsical? I can't answer that for you. It's, it says it's dancing naked. Okay. All right. Okay. Audrey says whimsical nudes would be a mix of pastel and nudes. Maybe add some packaging interest. $36 for 10 shades. This has to be some crappy formula plus on an ethical work situation. Okay, I feel like if we're talking about like the price point of something and how it's made, I don't know all of the ins and outs of that, but like what 
I guess now my my now follow up question is what what should be the price of a ten ten shade eyeshadow palette? Is are we doing sixty dollars? I'm just asking. I don't know the answer to that. Falafel fries are delicious, and I just we should get we should make that a thing. This is kind of like seventies Harry stylish. Oh, I could see like a, a, if well, you know, what, pleasing did make eyeshadows, and it didn't look anything like this. It was like more upsetting than this, but I could see it. I feel like a whimsical nude is like Huda palettes, kind of. Mm. <laughs> okay, everyone struggled with the whimsical nudes, and we're all on the same page. But I would say, based on the chat, I don't know that I have to talk any of you out of this. I, I also like. I, I don't know. I like, I think once you find your like nude palette that feels like your nude palette, it's like why why look more? Why look for more? But this could be somebody's. And again, price point, I'm not I'm not hundred percent mad at. All right, let's talk about them. Okay, I'm not gonna look at the chat. Well, I know you're gonna all have opinions about this. And what I'm about to say. Okay, so these are the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. They retail for sixty eight USD. Um, you can take out the eyeshadows, you can move them around. So if you have more than one, unfortunately at the time of launch, you could not buy an empty palette and make your own 6 p.m. palette, but it does seem like something that they're working on. All of this that I'm saying to you is stuff that I have simply heard because I don't care about this release. <laughs> like, I just simply don't care. I have no relationship to Lisa Eldridge. I I've not watched her content. I hear that she's lovely and I know that many many people who not only watch my channel, watch everyone else who I watch as channels really really like Lisa Eldridge and they like really really are into this and like the lipsticks and everything. But like I do not care. However, some of the color stories I like, I don't know which one is which, but the one in the bottom left, that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's a, the boring one. Very appealing to me at this juncture. Um, the, obviously the green one, but I don't want the blue, but it's in there, you know. And then there's like mauves and browns. I have been watching Kaki's videos on these. I, I can't. It sounds like the formula is wonderful. I just am not. I just am not interested. I, I think that she did a good job. Like conceptually, I like that brands are like moving towards this removable pans, moving it around situation. You know, I like to do that with my Natasha Denona palettes. So it's like all all things are good about this but like I could care less about this release but if you're excited about it if you have it I'm so happy for you um I don't know if I could talk out a Lisa Eldridge I don't know if you were like a Lisa Eldridge if you were in a parasocial relationship with her I don't know that I would know how to talk you down from this because this is exciting uh it's like whenever Pat McGrath released her motherships that I imagine that's the same feeling. All I will say to you is that I do regret buying all of the motherships. <laughs> so maybe just buy one and see if you like it. You don't need to buy all of them. And that's even if you want them. Okay. I'm about to look at this chat. I have this feeling I'm being read for filth at this time. So I'm bracing myself. All right. Okay, respect for Lisa Eldridge, but nope. Okay. Kelly says it's MUA shades marketed for the consumer. Nope. Okay. I want to believe in the Lisa experience, but there's no color story once. That that I want. That was from Charles. Charles, if you could build your own palette, would that change things for you? I'm curious. Still experiment with myth and sorcery. Sorcery is the green one. <laughs> well okay so the price point has come up again these are 68 dollars, and that's like what palettes cost but these are only six eyeshadows so 
I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is with price point. <laughs> I'm accepting that I am a simp for Lisa. And it's just the life I'm leading. <laughs> Uh, P.S. has so many of the looks I see online just blend everything one to an overall color. That has been what I have been clocking, but also I feel like that is what maybe um, a casual makeup wearer would want. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know what age these people, age people these are for. They're kind of expensive for younger people in general, but not a lot of mats are flats as my mom calls them for older people okay yeah there's some texture there I'm not saying that there's not there is there's intrigue there are there I mean like obviously I see that like textured silver shade and I'm like I probably would play with that she has overpriced these on USD they are valued at 49 pounds but go for $68 which is about $10 more than the conversion rate of the pound dollar there you go not into the size. <laughs> Widescreen palettes. Yeah, I wonder what... I, I'm, like, curious about the size of the pan, like, what they would, like, look like versus, like, some other pans that I can remove. <laughs> Sorry. Far too close to the Hourglass Singles experience. Um... I mean, I don't, is it as expensive? The hourglass ones were what, like $25 for each shade? It was woof, tough. These are what, like $16 a pop if you buy the singles? Because you can buy the singles, but you, I don't think you can buy the empty palette. Anyway, I'm actually, hello, Katie, welcome. Welcome to the chat. Everybody, welcome. Uh, Cole said some uh, shady things about Wayne Goss. I agree with you. Although I do like Wayne Goss brushes, but I do think his makeup line is like, but that's me. Well, feeling relieved in this chat that we are all in agreement because I felt very alone as a content creator watching all of my, other, all the thing, people I normally watch being like, this is the most exciting release of the year. And I was like, I don't know that that is true. Not for me. Not for me. How do these perform on deeper skin tones? I haven't sought out. I love because I don't care about these. I'm not really seeking out reviews. I like just happen to watch Khaki and she is walking us, walking children in nature, as one might say. Okay, let's see what's next. Oh, these. <laughs> oh, these. <laughs> so these are from Kaleidos. These are the Symphony Face Contours. So there's like, there's contour trios. There's... Also, I think you can buy them in singles, too. I've seen people use them in singles. I'm so happy to see contouring products <laughs> being released because I feel like I have been floating in the ocean as, like, the only person left on YouTube who still uses, like, gray, cool tone contours. Like, I'm, like, so excited. I'm so excited to see, like, a brand releasing them. There's also a range of these. This isn't, like, the best picture to depict this. So, But I also cannot remember how deep it goes. So I'm not sure how good they were at inclusivity in that aspect. But if we're bringing contour back as a trend, I'm ready. I've been ready. I never left. I'm always here. Why? Because my face is a rotundra. And I don't want it to look like that. But it is, in fact, what it is. And I... Like to fool men into thinking that maybe I put those. Have you guys ever seen those like rubber balls that people put in their mouth and they like chew on them to like <laughs> do their jawline? I just want to do that with makeup. I don't want to do that with like a. I don't want to. Also, it sounds like it would hurt your jaw. I'm getting old because that was like my primary concern about that thing. But I thought about buying one of those. I'm just saying. But then I was like, contour powder <laughs> does exist. I. Don't want matte highlights to come back, but that's just me. But it does seem that we are trending away from highlights at this point. So maybe this is what people might want to do instead. But as you can see, that's not my journey. I'm not going to be doing that. It's not part of my journey. I also think the compact is kind of slick, but it also looks like a weird size that wouldn't fit into my drawers. So, but Kaleidos is 
a brand I always have my my eye on. Uh, I have a palette. It was gifted to me from Beauty Beatdown, and I enjoy it. But like, it's not something I'm reaching for all the time, either. So, but I know a lot of people love Kaleidos. I still want to try their lip clay things that they are. Hello, Sunny. Welcome. I feel like the packaging is designed for people with names beginning with K and my name ain't cool with a K. Okay, that's great. I don't race for face palettes, but Cecily, they, it does seem that there are singles. I think. I think there are singles. Kaleidos never misses. All right, Chad. Love to hear that. Love buying in. Stephanie, bring contouring back. <laughs> Everyone, contour. By the way, these have marketing deceit, Tom. They marketed the single illuminator as something different, but it is a setting powder named Phil in the trio. Thank you for that clarification. Kegels for jawlines. <laughs> we are shapeshifters. Chad also said that they were very inclusive. Perfect. Someone, you know... Someone else run this show because it's certainly not me. What is it about face palettes that make me not want to use them? I don't like face palettes. I would I would want to buy a single. I would just buy the contour shade. But I now have made my own palette full of contour shades. And I pull it out every time I do my makeup. So, but I am not really the best at using face palettes. Here's, here's. I, I mean, I don't know what your makeup collections look like. I'm going to speak for myself. So, like, when I have, like, a cheek drawer, so it's, like, blushes, highlights, contours, bronzers, that's, like, all in the one drawer. Face palettes, for a very long time, like, lived where my eyeshadows lived. So when I was reaching for cheek products, I wasn't pulling out face palettes because they were, like, not living in the same space. But I then moved them all into the same drawer, and then I almost immediately decluttered all my face palettes because I realized I didn't like them as much as, like, pulling out singles and mixing and matching. <clears throat> everyone it, uh, co contour is great you just need to spend a little time figuring out how to do it for your face and if it's a good contour powder it won't be so pigmented that like it's scary it should be easy to blend i've hold, i've heard that the old contour palettes from Collider, these are this is like a new thing the old ones i've also heard that are not good Oh, they stopped doing magnetic packaging? I hate that. Um, Beth, how much is their shipping without... How much is their shipping without free shipping? I'm just saying, I've been paying for shipping on things recently because I got myself... I buy so many stupid things whenever I like try to hit the shipping minimum whenever I'm shopping. Okay, here we go. Another controversial yet bold and brave opinion of mine. These are the new Fluid Ultra Mats. Color Fluid Ultra Mats from Hindash. Now let me first say, Tiffany's going to be in this chat being like, I don't understand why Tom likes Hindash that much. And I, I think we all need to rem remember that Tiffany is wrong in this situation. Because Hindash knows what he's doing. And I think he continues to know what he's doing. However... As much as I would want to try these, I would get them in my my divine little hands, and I know I would use them one time, and I would think either that they were beautiful or incredibly hard for me to use, and then I would never touch them again. And that's just my reality. But, like, I'm so intrigued by these, and I have seen many a person on YouTube use these, and I... I organically i like didn't know this release was happening all of a sudden like everyone was reviewing them and i was just like oh, what is this? what is this i this is just something that i know that i wouldn't work into my rotation as a makeup consumer i don't know what the applicator is like i assume it's something that you can use and clean you know because he is a he's a makeup artist 
And like, I could see this being something really valuable as a makeup artist. But like, I also think if I bought, let's say I bought the like the lightest one to use as a contour shade. It would take me seven years to get through that, especially if you're like the you're supposed to like mix in with your complexion products, which is like what it says they're designed to do. It's just like you're going to have that forever. And as much as like, you know, we don't want to like you pay for a makeup item and you don't like you feel like you don't want to use it up because you want to get your money's worth. But also like I do want to use up my makeup. And something this small and petite, and I know it would be around forever in a day, I would just be mad that I, I wouldn't finish it. It's just something that would sit in my makeup collection forever. I just don't think this is, like, a practical thing for... Unless you're, like, really into, like, liquid mixing alchemy with your makeup. I just don't think that this, like, has a space in, like, the consumer market. I might be alone. I'm curious what you all think. I'm going to get caught up. <laughs> Why am I being attacked? So because you called me out for buying that Hindash palette because you said it looks like Hot Topic makeup. You said that to me. So that's why you're getting called out. And I just want everyone else to know that you're wrong. Okay? And I'm you embarrass me. You can embarrass me in the chat. Why haven't you? I honestly don't know. <laughs> Danessa Myrick's color fix. Yeah. I don't... Uh, Danessa Myricks has every color, and Hindash was very, very curated in what he decided to release. And, like, the colors are very Hindash. Can we just talk about the orange on the deep complexion model? They look so good. That looks so good on them. Okay, moving on. Catching up again. About Face. That would be, like, a good alternative. I'm, I've heard good things about them. Again, I think when I saw the about face paints, I don't know what they call them. Uh, those, I felt the same way about. This is a good thing that Amanda points out. I hear this Hindash product is great, but only from the people who've gotten it in PR. Hindash lost me with the fake swatches on his second palette. Pia wouldn't use it. Khaki's gonna paint her face with this. I was gonna crap on my clients if I came with through with this. Sure. <laughs> I have some color fixes from Danessa Myricks and I like have to force myself to use them, but they're so pretty. I don't like face palettes. I prefer liquid contour over powder. I like mm, cream. No, I don't know that that's true. Normally, if I use a cream, I'm topping it with a powder contour. Yeah, that model is selling that orange, the orange one. That model is making me go, I could wear that. I mean, I have worn orange lipstick. But again, I have orange lipstick, so I don't need it. Tiffany can do better. Chad, Tiffany can be mean to me better. <laughs> They have it in them. <laughs> all right. Cool. We all agree. This is not for us. Okay. Here's another basic palette that I found pretty. This is from Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Essential Palette. 10 mauve multi-use shadows in a palette that take you from a full face, day to night look. You can use it for the eyes and face. Okay. Um... No price point on here. But it's, uh, <laughs> this was available on November 4th, so it's been out for a minute. I think this is a really pretty basic palette. I had a Dominique Cosmetics palette, and I certainly don't have it anymore, so I don't know where... <laughs> I don't know where uh, along the line I got rid of that, but I don't think... I, I remember not liking the formula so much. I remember thinking it was like a pretty like difficult more difficult than I would like for it to blend. Tiffany, this is not a call out. This is just something they have acknowledged about me. Is that now that I have tried eyeshadows and I've tried makeup that basically does the work for me, I'm not willing to do the work anymore. And I feel like the Dominique Cosmetics formula is like something you have to like put a little bit of elbow grease into. And I'm certainly not here for that. I'm not going to be doing that. But it reminds me of, I mean, it's not like the same, but like it reminds me of Divine Rose from Pat McGrath like not exactly but like 
I use when I use divine rose, I use those as both face and eye. Like I'll use the whole palette like all over my face. And there's like a dark brown and a black. I don't know. I, I mean, like if if you're just doing your makeup for work, I could see this. I could see this being something that's like pretty invaluable. Not for me. Also, that like purple taupey shade in the top left. That's kind of it's hidden. It's in a space for me. I do think it is pretty, Tiffany. Don't be mean to me. The only mom is the packaging. It is giving 2017 era vibes. Didn't Dominique release this kind of? Sure. I mean, almost everything that Dominique released, except for like the one cosmic palette, all has kind of looked similar to me. Even like the, the coffee one that everyone was obsessed with. Pretty boring. I've been into neutrals lately, but this bores me. All right. I feel like the claim for the face is just marketing. Like, huh? Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've organically just used eyeshadows on my face and just because I was like, I think this will work on my face. But I, don't, I think it's brave and bold to just like try to use that as a selling point. Like you can't do that with other eyeshadows. It's like you s certainly can. <laughs> okay amanda wants to do a poll let me do it let me add it okay start a poll should amanda get the subliminal mothership for 90 dollars we're gonna ask the community let them let amanda know We'll let that go for a while. But yeah, we didn't like this. <laughs> oh, so, sorry. I didn't actually put that in correctly. Should they buy the Subliminal Mothership or Lisa Eldridge's Vega? That I hold on. Let me let me end this poll. Let me try this again. No, we're learning things. We're doing this together. OK. Pat McGrath subliminal. My contact is like moving around in my eye. I can't see. Lisa Eldridge Vega. What should Amanda buy? This is fun. I. Which one's subliminal? Is that Mothership 3? I like that one. If it's Mothership 2, then I wouldn't buy it. My personal opinion. <clears throat> it's the one with the like... Oh, okay. It's Mothership 3. I like Mothership 3. It's one of the better ones, in my opinion. All right. While you guys are voting, we'll we'll come back to the poll after we've talked about this release. So this is the Chanel Sable Mange Le Ton. <laughs> Every time I say something in French, I think back to the time, like it was early, uh, early Critical Sass Live where Artie, they said, they said to me <laughs> in the chat, just like French gibbering. <laughs> gibberish and I think about it every time I try to say something with a French accent wait is it mothership three or one I don't know I like mothership one too just not mothership two if it's mothership two then I say no don't do that one all right this is a lightweight foundation with biddable light to medium coverage for glowing healthy luminous look and comes with a brush 135 dollars in 13 shades. Oh. It's so weird. Why is this so much more expensive than the other? Sh like the Chanel water tint is $65 or something or something there about. What is in this foundation? 
that makes it more. And Brittany was telling me about another version of this that comes in a pump. And it's even, I think it's more expensive, isn't it? That's bad. But like, what, why, why is this? I just don't, know, I don't understand why this one's so much more. It's like double the cost of their other foundations. What is happening? I don't understand. Uh, it looks like pe- it looks like cookie butter. The one, the biggest one, it's like the same color, but it wouldn't taste as good. I don't think this is bad. Chanel's bad. It's bad. Uh, so yeah, who would use this brush? No one. No one in the right mind would use this brush. Insane. Yeah. All the things I went to buy for that price just ran through my head. Yeah, I mean, buy a mothership palette instead of the sublimage le ton. Interesting. I'm so surprised that um, there's a big aversion to. I don't like makeup. I don't like makeup. That's not true. What am I trying to say? What were the words that I wanted to come out of my mouth that failed to? I don't really like when foundations come in a tub. Now, currently. My Surratt foundation is in a Tupperware container because I broke the package. But I also have the Chanel, not Chanel. We're talking about Chanel. I don't know anything anymore. I quit. <laughs> no, I have the Shantakai and I I feel like I'm, I use it. I think the amount of times I've used it versus how much is gone. is It's like I feel like I always pull out too much from the jar. Mm-hmm. The one in the pump is more expensive. It's because it's part of their sublimage line, and that's their most expensive. Ugh. Bye, Kelly. Happy birthday. It's not about what's in the foundation. It's about what's on the packaging that makes it expensive, the name. Yeah. Amira, I do believe that this is what Khaki has been using. I got a new battery for my computer. I use as a monitor. Funny enough, it was $145. That's appropriate. Yeah, this... this, this I don't know. I, I now have an aversion to the Shantikai foundation, which is like, I would like to try a new foundation, please. But it probably won't be this one. <laughs> okay, this one's selfish. I don't think anyone's going to care about these but me. So these were, I love when Ritual Defee like sneaks in something, like a thing that's not going to come out for a while. So these were like a gift with purchase for their like Black Friday week or whatever, you know, whatever, what we do now. When on Tuesday, when I woke up and I got emails saying it's Giving Tuesday, and I was like, "Didn't we just give thanks on Thursday?" I don't understand. I, Giving Tuesday was new to me this year. I like I didn't know that was a thing. Anyway, these are the Creature of Light Soft Glow Enhancers. It comes in three shades: Radiant Lilac, Opal, Luminous, Spun Gold, Sunlit, Warm Bronze. So this is like a combination of two of their lab sample releases that they have done in the past. They released like a stick primer that looked like these. And they also released like a a luminous thorn oil. And this is like the combo in between. These are not going to be released until summer of 2023. But like if you made a purchase from them over the weekend, you got them. Or if you're on their PR list, which I've seen both of those things happen. Um... I would, I would wear, I want the white one. I want it. My guess is these are probably $70. I can't confirm that. I have no idea what they should cost. I'm just saying that that would be my guess. If if it's like in the thorn oil range, which is like pretty pricey. I, I mean, Ritual Defeat just gets, I don't think, I don't, it gets it for me, right? Like glowy, ethereal words that I would like to be used to describe me. I'm like literally in hol- <laughs> a holographic t-shirt and my skin is, I have ritual, the highlight, it's ritual defeat. I'm just saying, I would want my skin to be this glowy purple. I used to have things that would look like that. I don't know. I never got to use like the Becca purple primer. 
I imagine it gives you that kind of effect. Oh, I forgot to end the poll. Amanda, it looks like you're going to get the subliminal palette. Hi, Steven. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Creature of Light is such a nice name and it feels good in contrast to the brand name. Love the names. They look pretty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that they put lavender in everything. Uh, Lisa's, the Lisa Eldridge Foundation is on my list. I can tell you I hate the bottle. and That's already annoying me. I don't, if you've never taken the time to read a product description from Ritual to Feed directly. It's like a poem. It's like you get sent to a place. <laughs> they're, they're, they've done it for me. They like really sucked me in and they're like, this is how we do things. And I'm like, ah, yes. Verbose product descriptions. <laughs> I'm running through a field. I'm a fairy. I've taken off into flight. I will never touch the ground again. That's like how I feel when I'm reading a ritual defeat product description. <laughs> I do like the thorn oil. Uh, I, if you don't already follow Andromeda on Instagram, I, I can't think of their handle. I think it's Andromeda S. They have these. So they were posting swatches of them. They looked really gorgeous. Anyway, I, you know, I'll see them in summer of 2023. Okay, here's what, here's. Here's a brand that I, I don't know much about, but I, I was taken by this. This is from the brand Gloss Gods. 12 shades, 6 mattes, 6 shimmers, $38. It's the Smoke and Mirrors eyeshadow palette. Now, I believe I saw one of you talking about this on your stories the other day, and I was like, what is that? So here's my, here's my, my brain, my hot take when I see this. This is, this is maybe a controversial to some of you. This is if... Melts Millennial Pinks was actually a good palette. That's what that looks like. <laughs> I hated the Millennial Pinks palette, and it's not even because it was pink. It was just like, why was there like a silver, a black, and like what was that all? What were those three shades doing on the one? Like, so in here, you have some pinks, you have some depth, the the shine, like those shimmers look scrumptious. They look delicious. I want to lick them. They look so good. I, this is pretty. This is really pretty. It's not like a color story that I would like go out of my way to buy, but like, I mean, they've sold me on this. Like, I mean, swatches you have to take with a grain of salt, but like they lit them well. They look good. I like and smoke and mirrors. You know, it's a fun concept. I think, I think this is gorgeous. And I'm like, I'm into it. Uh, have any of you tried Gloss Gods? Because I don't know anything about them. I also feel like any single time I bring up an indie brand that I've never heard of on my channel, they always have some kind of controversy. So I I'm sorry if they do. I don't know about it. Cecily, it was Cecily. <laughs> Angie says this brand is great. Good. Amanda, I do use the thorn oil as a primer, but because I have oily skin, I only use three drops. The package says use five to ten. I think that's too many for my skin. <laughs> I have a couple of the Gloss Gods palettes. They're great for the price. The special shimmers are baller. I like the shades, but the font is, well, you know, I did have to check that it wasn't ColourPop before I like, put it on the list because uh, I don't talk about ColourPop on my channel. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's basic packaging. I, when I'm talking about an indie brand or when I'm thinking about an indie brand, I'm not so much concerned about the packaging. I want I'm more concerned about the performance of the things inside when it cut when it comes to indie. And if an indie brand can like nail a packaging moment, then there's like something really beautiful happening. And I love that. Ooh. Five to ten too much for my wallet. Fair enough. 
Maybe I'm a clown, and I might be, but if this were a quad in Lux packaging, it would be over. Yeah. You can edit this down. Oh, that would be good. Oh, there was a brand that did a quad, but it was like $100, and it I feel like it was like the broken down version of this color story. It, it's a, I mean, the information I have says that it's $38. I mean, it's not the worst. Again, what is the cost of an eyeshadow palette? What is it worth to you? These are all things that we have to make our own decisions on. Okay. All right. So Lethal released two palettes. And um, this is the Evergreen palette. And this retails for $55.94. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's green. The shade, the middle shade on the left, like the middle left column. It's over. I'd wear that. Do I need it? Certainly not. So if you took an, if you looked at my makeup collection, like looked at it real quick and looked away, you would, you know, you would know fast that I don't need this, but it's really pretty. And like, I kind of like that there's a purple in it. I don't know what's going on with me. What's happening? <clears throat> um, <laughs> some of the colors remind me of the Byredo and Siren. Okay. I have tried the Teresa, the first one. <laughs> Teresa's Lethal. I think that was the first one. Or is it Lethal is Dead? I had the first one. Um, I really like their mattes, but they're like a little bit different than mattes that I've used before. They like blend really well, but they're like, they're like interesting. They almost look greasy when you put them on. And, and like, I find that to be like, a good quality, but like also the Teresa's dead palette is like not something I use a lot. I now use those more as singles than I use them as, um, I use them more as like, yeah, they just don't use that palette that much. I don't, the shimmers, I think if you're, if you're like many of us are and you like like chunky textured shimmers, I don't think you're really going to get that from Lethal, but the shimmers are really pretty and I think they like, they're really smooth. And if that's the kind of shimmer you're into, then you would probably like them. But I think they have been like playing with texture a little bit more. So I could be like speaking out of my ass completely right now. It is pretty. I think everyone should wear green. I want Khaki to wear more green. I know she won't, but that's like, that's my fantasy. Steven, I agree. I too must own Evergreen eyeshadow. Ivy is right. Green is a neutral, period. It is. Yeah, I would say that I like lethal mats. <laughs> what if I what if what if I sent all of us to go comment on Khaki's next video and be like more green eyeshadow next year please I think she'd kill me <laughs> she would slide into my dms and send me a nasty letter <laughs> I was on that live I like had to dip but she just doesn't do it often. I don't, she has like an aversion to it. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I care about it less. But this is the other one being released. This is the Metamorphosis palette. It's the same price, $55.94. This is, if you like, autumn. I mean, they're all pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty. And it would look pretty on me. <laughs> <laughs> and I just mean that because I have green eyes. It would look really nice on my eyes. But like, it's pretty too, but it doesn't make, it's, it's not like the first one, which made me go, Ugh! you know, because it was green. And you know what's so funny is I love green eyeshadow. I feel like I so rarely wear it on my, in my videos. And I feel like maybe people think I'm lying. More 
uh, real looking swatches. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I haven't spent much time on their website, but I've heard that their swatching isn't the best. We will ma more Verde. It's already on the way. <laughs> I started watching the uh, uh, Audra's reaction to Khaki's video. I did not finish it yet, though. It reminds me of The Hunger Games, and I didn't love that movie apart from the flame dress. It's fair. Flame dress. Sinna is the best character in The Hunger Games. And I won't hear otherwise. Someone asked me to talk about this. I don't know how much I can talk about a brow product, but let's let's dive into it, shall we? Melt is releasing a couple of brow products. There's the Perfectionist Brow Ultra Fine Pen, $24. A microtip brow pen that makes it easy to create the most real-looking hair strokes with the thinnest tip in universal brown. Then they have the Max Hold Brow Gel. Create the perfect laminated brow effect. Heavy due to formula coats each brow hair with dual action applicator that has a curved comb on one side that controls and separates each hair while the opposite side lays them flat for the ultimate laminated effect. And then they also have the brow pencil and it comes in a handful of colors. And it looks like you can get a bundle for $50, but... Um, Anyway, the brow pencil is 22, the gel is 25, the brow pen is 24. I don't understand why you would go through the trouble of making a handful of shades for the one thing and not meet that same shade range in the other thing. I mean, like, clear brow gel, sure. If you don't want to make tinted brow gel, that's fine. But why only one? <laughs> like, I don't understand. I don't understand. I remember It Cosmetics, they had like a universal brow pencil. And it was one of those things where I was like, it's not, no one's, eye, it's not gonna, nothing's going to work for anyone's eyebrow because it's, like, it's not going to happen. Anyway, the reason I was hesitant to talk about this is because men are gone. <laughs> These products are, I mean, they'd be useful to me if I wanted to draw on eyebrows, but I don't. <laughs> Less eyebrows in 2023. No, I don't think anyone's going to chant that with me, but it's what I want. <laughs> Tom talking about a brow product was not on my bingo card tonight. Interesting. Oh, yes. A universal brown, Kelsey. That's what they said. Universal. So many blondes. I use shadows for brows. Pencils don't interest me. When I had eyebrows, I panned a lot of browns by just using it as as brow powder are we are we still live on these dumb brow pencils am i caught up yes the brow yeah you're live if you're on the brow pencils we're still <laughs> that's what we're talking about <sighs> okay ah uh, yes i did want to touch down on this Sephora is doing 20% off for everyone. So anyone who was is VIB or just a beauty insider can now all get 20% off. But you didn't know that was coming. So you might have bought a bunch of stuff with just your 10% off, with just your 15% off. And now they're like offering the 20% off to everyone. This is, I think this is likely off of one purchase. If I recall, I was there the first year that they did this nonsense where it was like, it was like a, they did this right after the VIB sale. And I was just like, you, you're mean. That's mean. That's bullying. What they're doing, that's bullying. Also, it's supposed to run from the 2nd to the 11th. This, this is garbage, mama. I, it's so... And the other thing is, like, they're, maybe they don't do this next year and anyone who is, like, wise enough to try to wait for the 20% off is, like, not going to get it. But they always have some kind of follow-up sale. It's It used to be, like, you would pay 
you had to hit like a $75 minimum at one point and then you would get like a coupon for later. Like this is trash. Anyway, here's what I'll say. If you did not manage to get a deal on any makeup in the past month, I think you probably don't need whatever you did not manage to buy now. And I'm saying that because what I would imagine that one would buy in the scenario where you're like, I have 20% off, I need to buy something. That's when you're going to buy something that you didn't really want to begin with, but you're only buying because it's 20% off. It's not something that you've thought a lot about. It's not something that you've wanted for a long time. It's not something that you set aside time. The only thing that I could see you may be using this for is if something launched, which like we're, we've just went through all of this stuff. All of this stuff was released earlier this month. There's, I have one more release that hasn't, I think hasn't dropped after this one. So my advice to you, if is if you're tempted to buy this, um, is to not because if you do shop, Sephora wins. I mean, Sephora wins anyway if you shop. But if you encourage this behavior, if they make money, if they make the money that they think they're going to make on this sale, they're just going to keep doing it and tricking you and doing these sales after sales. And then like you're going to get duped into accidentally spending more money on the one where you get a lesser of a discount because they've duped you. So don't. I, in fact, I'm going to say this, this is brave and bold. I try not to buy my makeup from Sephora anymore. I will buy it from the brand's website. I'll buy it from Ulta if I can. Um, I'd always link to Sephora because I know that's like the most convenient thing. And I think like internationally, like more people have access to that. But like, I don't really be buying from Sephora all that much anymore. Okay, I'm going to catch up on the uh, chat. Sephora, you okay, sis? No. Um, I'm mad, too. I would be mad, too. I mean, I didn't really participate in the last sale, but I, I bought, like, a handful of things, but it was all skincare stuff. Um, Nicole's excited. Megan knew it. Melt seems to be using losing their shit this year. The Amor Imariposa's debacle must have taken a lot out of them. I don't think I know the drama that happened with Melt earlier this year. I don't think I was paying attention. It is bullying, Elizabeth. Well, I didn't get invited to the friends and family, even though I used to work there. No one was like, do you need a coupon? No. I literally can't even think of something I'd buy at this point. That's my, my thing is that, if you were buying from a brand's website, if you were like paying attention to all the sales and you like really wanted something, like what could be left that you did, like you didn't get an offer on that was probably better than this because 20% is like not that good in the grand scheme of things. Like there are brands that are out there like knocking things half off sometimes this time of year. Sloan, I'm so happy that I was able to eloquently say something once in my life. <laughs> I was glad I was able to articulate that for you. So for must lose. There are so many things that we can take away and chant from the chat today. Cat Dancer says, so they didn't make their numbers. That's exactly what it is. Good night, Kelly. Good night. Congratul oh, congratulations. Oh, that's so exciting. Oh. Okay. All right. The last one, it's, I mean, it's not a curveball because they put it in the title, but Byredo. Byredo is launching the Purple Echo eyeshadow. Trendroot is reporting this as being $58. That's way cheaper than their other ones. So I have questions about the legitimacy of that price point because I don't understand why it would be that price when the other ones are more. <sighs> I haven't been into purple recently, but when I started my makeup journey, I was like really into purple. I like loved a purple look. I want, I want this. <laughs> I don't know what happened. And I think it's all of it. It's like the purples are pretty. The packaging makes me want to lick it. It's so pretty. I have no defense on this one. 
I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. I think it's so good. How much would I use it if I bought it? Probably not enough. Absolutely not enough. But it is stunning. <laughs> I love the packaging. The swatches are sad looking. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, I haven't used Byredo. Brittany has a lot of opinions about Byredo because um, she's used them. I have not touched these before. I've never touched anything from this brand before. But if it's like luxury eyeshadow, then it's one of those things where it like doesn't make sense until it's on your eye. That's my personal opinion sometimes with luxury eyeshadow. <laughs> Brittany, are you going to buy this? I'm so curious. Everyone's asking Brittany. Brittany, like everyone immediately turned to Brittany and that was the right thing to do because I'm, it's not. <laughs> um, I have also said to Brittany before, because we've, we've had lengthy conversations about Byredo. I never was interested in a Byredo palette until I saw Khaki just like swatch it in one of her videos and I was like, that looks so much better than anything on Byredo's website. Anything that Byredo puts out for their own swatches, they're bad. So you need to like seek out, it's, you need to seek out other things. Okay, so Brittany is buying it. If you don't follow Brittany, Brittany is born blushing in the chat and she has her own channel. So if you're not subscribed to her, you should subscribe to her because you'll hear things about Byredo and Sisley and all kinds of wonderful things. And, ooh. I don't know what's oh I saw the girl cult cyberpunk I did see that it was very cool packaging I is Isamaya still in charge of Byredo I can't imagine now that she has her own brand but maybe I like this I like this um was Isamaya responsible for whenever they did that large palette with like the the, the face on it that scared Teresa's dead I think about that a lot. And I do wonder what Teresa did with that palette. Like, did she really, I mean, maybe she didn't put it under the floorboards, but like, did she leave it there? Did she really leave it there or did she like actually declutter it? Uh, I, I don't think America, I don't think Americans have access to Tammy Tanuka right now, still. Because that's a brand that I really want to try. Because I love their makeup. Good night, Sunny. All right. We also are going to wrap this up. Because that was the last thing I had. All right. Well. Well, well, well. To any of you who have been to more than one Critical Sass Live, thank you for joining me. And if this was your first Critical Sass Live, I hope you had a lot of fun. These are so much fun. This is the last one of the year because I typically do them on the last week of the month but we're heading into the holiday season and whether or not you celebrate, I'm sure that you're going to be pretty busy. And so what I'm going to say to you is that we're just not going to do that for the sake of all of us. We don't want to like, you're going to set aside time with be with your friends and family. And I am going to be doing that too. And then we will start back up in January when everyone releases a new foundation. Cause that's just what happens every year. I appreciate you all so much. You can follow me on Instagram at hope mess Tom, all one word. You can support me on Patreon if you would like to support me there. That's linked down below. Um, I think that's all the things I have to say. Uh, remember to follow your hoat and you will find me. Bye-bye. I can't end the live while I do this, so I have to do the awkward, like, friends, and then I have to, like, scooch over to end it. Anyway, I will see you in uh, – a bunch of contents coming out in December. So this is not the last time I'll see you this year. It's just the last time I'll be doing this with you this year. Okay, bye.